Yes. So let's talk about, I said about three or four. So let's talk about a little bit of recruiting because that's one big part of this usability testing. Okay, so there are companies that do this professionally. Uh, there's also online organizations that you can go to and you can get your uh, stuff tested. But for the process of this, I'll try to show you guys a, you know, what, we call, what we call right now cheap and dirty kind of usability testing, a way to kind of do it yourself. So we're basically looking for three or four people for you know, maybe two plus rounds or so, something like that. But the idea is, uh, I said three or four. If you have three really reliable people, that's great. You might want to have one and a backup. That's why I've said four here. Really, the reason we don't have more than three is because we kind of want to do that uh, morning testing. So if we have one hour each for three people, then that allows us some time in between and allows us to debrief in the afternoon. So that's, that number is not necessarily just arbitrary. It's sort of picked for a time, a time of day kind of reason. The most important thing is something that Steve Krag pushes on um, quite a bit, and we use it for design thinking too. We use this terminology to say, recruit loosely and grave on a curve. So what we do is we don't really think about it so much as the problem is, is, is getting the right person. What we do is what we take the person and we triage that information that they provide for us. So it allows us a little more flexibility in the recruitment, which is really the toughest part. There are some exceptions to this. So for example, if your site has, like, has a particular relevance or some esoteric person or, or, or that kind of thing, you're not going to really be able to use the sort of recruit Lucy thing. So for example, if you have a person who is conflicting or, diver or divergent interests, it's funny that we mentioned this as sort of a kind of good housekeeping idea. We had somebody who was in one of the user pres presentations that were talking about this, and we said, okay, well, let's test your site. And his site had to do with, uh, how do I put this kind of politely, had to do with uh, people having relationships that are not really on the up and up. <laughs> Uh, like extramarital, like a type of relationship, and uh, uh, and and, uh, and their websites about this, and that we're not judging or anything like that. But the problem is that we're then figuring out people in the audience participate to actually user test that, and so there's sort of a conflict of interest. Okay, <laughs> kind of funny. I say that in tongue in cheek, but one of the main principles when you do usability testing, you have an ownership. It's like kind of like the Hippocratic oath of like medical professionals that like, you can do the t the subject no harm, okay? So I'd say this in tongue in cheek, but this is actually quite important here to know is that no matter what happens, you always wanna thank the individual, no matter what happens, you wanna make sure that they're safe, okay? So software is a little easy, rarely does software blow up in your face, type of like that. But if we're say user testing like trucks and cars like that, so the tester is always safe. And the last one is if your app needs esoteric or uh, domain expertise, like I think we talked about, okay, well, there's knowledge that's in the world and in your head. Like, so for example, stenographers or something, they have a very esoteric type of keyboard, right? And you know, somebody said, that's not very usable. You should have all the letters n put out normally. Well, that actually impacts on how fast a stenographer can type or something like that. So that's a type of thing where like, if you're testing stenographer typograph things, then you want a stenographer because a regular person will give you good feedback, but that's probably not the feedback that you're looking for. Some more good ideas that are gonna help you guys, okay? Offer good incentives. Like an SAP mug, no, just <laughs> The idea is uh, usually, I guess, after t Steve talks about you know, uh, some averages, I think what we're seeing is maybe if it's an hour interview, I think 50 bucks is pretty reasonable, somewhere in that kind of neighborhood. Obviously, you, you, you don't have to do that if you want to try to lower your cost a little bit, but you want to give something to show the user that their time is valuable, like an honorarium or something like that. Maybe sometimes, like, you know, it's like Kickstarter, right? Maybe it's not money that they're looking for. Maybe it's some type of swag or something like that. So I did put that cup there for a reason, right? So maybe they're good with just verbal key. Usually it's a little more than a handshake. So somebody said jokingly, once the Phoenicians invented money, a thank you is no longer good enough. Right? So go into your own networks, you know, and there are certain cases where you, you can use the same person twice, so you can definitely go back to mine that, but like, I think that in today's age, the six, six degrees of separation, it's probably even less than that like now. We know so many people, we're connected to so many people, so this is a lot easier of a problem to solve than say it was like 10, 15 years ago. A couple other things that are really simple, but it will help you a long way. Keep the invitation simple. Uh, we're not trying to protect the information or something like that, but it's just that simple things that you, simple invitations generally get responded to easier, okay? Uh, don't offer too much info. You know, that sometimes that color colors the characters that you kind of want to get and so on and so forth. Try to make it as simple as possible because really you're looking, f you're doing simplistic recruiting. 
the advert or the advertisement or whatever you put out should kind of reflect that, right? You want to be light and cheerful, that type of thing. And lastly, you know, we talked about recruit loosely, grade on curve. You know, everyone was a newbie at one point in time. So, you know, try not to keep your barriers in entry if you're using this type of usability testing. That's not, that's not the key. Don't think that if you make it very hard to get or spend a lot of time in targeting and finding the right recruitment, that you'll get the answers that you want because I'll show you later on, it's not as effective as just doing the process properly.